Good morning, everyone. It is a very overcast, but surprisingly warm day. The warmest day we've had in over a week. And uh, it's only supposed to get up to around 55 degrees, if that's any indication how terrible the weather has been the last couple of weeks. And this is the best I have to work with. So we're gonna see what we can do with it. I'm actually out exploring another new area today. Uh, should be pretty good potential for salamanders. I have been to this general area before, but there's a lot of stuff around here for me to do and explore that I've never done. So that's going to be our goal today. We're going to go try to get into some salamanders in the creeks and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see a snake, but I'm not going to count on it just because of how cold the overnight's been. But this is a pretty good looking forest edge right here. I'm going to walk this into the creek. All right guys, so our first herp of the day came from this interesting little creek with a couple of seepages coming off the side. You can see super oxidized over there. There's a lot of groundwater coming up. And those are the types of places where salamanders tend to hang out. And I managed to turn up this guy. This is a little Southern two lion salamander. Specifically, this guy's a male. You can see he's got some Siri there, but he's not super keen on sitting still for video. So I'm just gonna let him go and uh, keep at it. I like this habitat, seems like a really interesting place. Hopefully we'll be able to turn up some more salamanders throughout the day. So right off the bat, this creek is a lot different from what we normally end up in with these steep banks and uh, pretty clear rocky water. There's not a lot of muck in this creek, which I'm not sure if it bodes well for my hopes of finding uh, muds or spring salamanders, but uh, I do like the look of it. And there's definitely some nice seepy areas, so we're going to follow it for a little bit and see if we get into some good salamander habitat. Look at this. Super deep, super narrow. And I'm up to my knees now on this. Look at this. This is a super interesting creek. Lots of potential. Well, this first stop has been rather uneventful so far. I really do like this creek, but the few things I've found to flip haven't had much under him. And uh, as I progress down the creek, it's starting to look less and less suitable. So I think we're going to move on to our next spot. Well, the second I finished talking, I kind of rolled over this log and uh, another little two line. So it seems like this is a pretty suitable creek for these guys. But then again, what creek isn't? What have we got here? Somebody threw a minnow trap in the creek. Doesn't appear to be baited or even attached to a string. It's just sitting here. No bait. Hard to pass up a free minnow trap, but uh, I'm going to leave this just in case someone is actually trying to capture something with no bait or a string. <laughs> All right, whose traps are these and what are you trying to catch without bait? <laughs> this is not super detrimental because there's no bait in there, but if there was bait in these and they were just sitting here, um, I can't imagine someone put these out today and leaving these traps in the water for extended periods of time is a good way to kill a lot of wildlife because they get trapped in there. And things like turtles and salamanders can't breathe air. Even though this one is positioned pretty well, half of the trap is hanging out of the water. So, like I said, these are pretty benign. A lot of times when I pull up abandoned traps, they have a heap of dead fish and sometimes even dead turtles. And that is not cool. So, whoever put these out, you did a good job. You probably aren't going to catch much without bait, but, I mean, at least you're not killing stuff. Look at this view. Absolutely beautiful. Head into our next spot. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more salamander than the first. All right, guys. Well, that last spot ended up being mostly a brambly mess. Um, we still have super thick cloud cover, and I have only seen two two-line salamanders all day, and it's now 2 p.m. So I'm going to retreat to more familiar territory where I hopefully will be able to have better luck turning up something at least. And I have only hit this area a couple times, so there's definitely potential for things here that I haven't seen yet. So hopefully we'll be able to get into some salamanders down here. Look at this wren. What's up, dude? He's foraging. And right off the bat out here, we have a nice northern slimy salamander under this kind of dry log. 
Obviously we see these guys just about everywhere, but it's kind of a testament that this is the first one of the day. It has been very slow out here for the most part. So I'm just gonna cover this guy back up and get into the better salamander habitat, start flipping some more logs. The really cold weather we had leading up to this point in January has made the forest feel very dead. The chorus frogs are really hesitant to call. There's not much bird activity. It's just very silent if I stop and stand still. Which is cool, it's just, it's not normally by this time in January, unless we're having one of these ridiculous cold fronts like we have this year. It's normally pretty busy. There's normally chorus frogs calling on days like today, birds calling, etc. So. And not too long after hitting this stuff that's actually wet, we have a nice four-toed salamander right here. Saw a couple of these in the last episode. And I'm kind of surprised there aren't any eggs under here yet. It's that time of year where they should be laying their eggs. This looks like a gravid female. So we're just gonna cover her back up, leave her to her business. Well, would you look at that? There are actually a couple of early spotted salamander egg masses in this pool. You can kind of see one right there. It's covered in mud. And we're at the wrong angle to be able to see them because the reflection. Check this out. Got an angle where we can actually see into it. And there's some little spotted salamanders developing in there. Very cool. Not the best look because this water is kind of crummy, but there's one there. There's one there. Right there. And then there's another one over here. So there's three of them in here already this time last year i want to say there were quite a few in this puddle but uh the puddle's a lot lower right now because we haven't had as much rain and the colder temps have probably got the spot it's a little more hesitant to start breeding all right i already flipped this but it's our first one of these for the day there he is that is a very nice northern red salamander so this is the much more common cousin of the mud salamander that we were really hoping to see today. These guys tend to be a little bit more colorful than the mud salamanders that would be in this region, which are Gulf Coast mud salamanders. And those guys, that subspecies of mud salamander is a little bit dull compared to the others, but obviously still really cool. This guy looks to be a little bit of an integrate between a northern and southern red salamander. You can see he's got a very dark face, which is typically more characteristic of southerns. We're far enough north, though, that we'd be well under the range of the northern red, which makes me think that this guy could be an intergrade. Because it definitely does not look like your textbook northern red, but it's also a little bit more vibrant and a little further north than you would expect southerns. But hey, probably the coolest salamander we've seen today, and I think we've probably seen less red salamanders than normal. But this is a really good-looking guy. We're going to put him back under his log and keep flipping. Hopefully we'll see some more of these. Now this is something that makes sense that it's in this area, but I haven't seen one before. This is a little Hillis's dwarf salamander. These are one of our smallest salamanders, even smaller than the four toed. And that is a full grown adult. So here he is in all his grandeur. The only thing I can think of that could possibly be smaller than these is the patch nose salamander. I mean, I have seen plenty of these guys and they don't get any bigger than this. This is average, if not above average for the Hillis's dwarf salamander in the state of Georgia. One interesting thing about this guy is you can see where his tail almost broke off at one point and was healing back. So now he's just, oh, now he's just got this weird little floppy tail. One more interesting thing about these guys I'd like to show you if they'll cooperate is they have a super yellow belly. There you go. You can see it while he's between my fingers right there. Hillis' dwarf salamander, one of the smallest salamanders in the United States. And a pretty good find. Definitely the best find of the day, if I had to pick one. Mostly because I haven't seen these guys here before, but I'm just going to let him go back into his log. Go on. There you go. Boop. They're really interesting in their movement because they don't, they don't just run like most salamanders. They have this kind of jerky movement where they'll move really fast and then stop. But yeah, we're going to poke around this a little bit more, see what else we can turn up. 
Here's another nice little four-toed salamander. This one's a little male. Like Eurecia, male four-toed salamanders have enlarged pheromone receptors on their chin. I don't know if they're technically Siri or not. I'm not really sure about the intricacies of uh, labeling <laughs> things that dangle off the chins of salamanders, but either way, always nice to see these guys. This one is actually really colorful. He's got some really cool blues and grays. And then of course that big orange carrot tail. Good looking salamander, we'll put him back. These guys seem to be pretty common in this little microhabitat, which is really cool to see, so. Check this little guy out. That is a really yellow little four-toed, and it's a juvenile, so we really do not see a lot of juveniles during the daytime. It's possible that's just how they look when they're sheltering and not active, but one of the weirder looking four-toads I've seen. We'll pull him out and get a better look. All right, there he is out in the open. He's a little bit more typical once we got him out from under the log and in some good light, but still very different looking than the other ones we've seen today. Never would have really guessed that four toads would be the most common salamander of the day, but it's shaping up to be that way. Here's our first frog of the day. I just flipped this nice little green frog under this log. This is another area that could have wood frogs, so I got a little bit excited when I flipped them. But alas, it is just the common green frog. We'll put him back. This log's so nice looking, I took a picture of it before I came over here to flip it. Let's see if it lives up to its appearance. And it doesn't look like there's anything underneath it, as it would turn out. I just flipped, surprise, surprise, another four-toed. The difference is this one is possibly the longest one I've ever seen. I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to call this thing Titanic for a four-toed. That is wild. And he's pretty sharp looking too. This looks like another male to me. You can see he's got some nice danglies and uh, a very, very long tail. So yeah, I'm gonna put this giant guy back under his little log and keep working this habitat. It's just, I don't remember it looking this nice last time I was here. So maybe I didn't get into this stuff before. Maybe this is all new stuff. We'll see. I'm gonna hit this pretty hard though. I've only got about an hour or two of light left, so I'm gonna have to think about getting out of here relatively soon, but I'm gonna keep at it a bit longer. Check this big guy out. It's a nice northern slimy. This is a big, really good looking adult. Probably around six inches long. From the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. But he's also got a regenerated tail. You can see the pattern kind of stops and it's a little bit more stubby there at the end. Don't go on my sleeve, dude. Yeah, that's how you can tell they're regenerated. It's not an even taper. The spots disappear right there too. Yeah, I'm gonna get this guy out of my sleeve before I get slimed and we'll put him back under his log. All right, dude. There you go. Ooh, look at all that slime coming off his tail. All right, guys, it's 4.15 and uh, this time of year, it's gonna be getting dark probably a little bit later than it has been, but I'm gonna start making my way back to the car because I'm not sure how far of a walk I have and uh, don't wanna get stuck out here in the dark. So I'm gonna make my way back up this mucky swamp uh, on the other side that I walked down and hopefully be able to find some new logs to flip on the way. So if I see anything between here and the car, I'll definitely let y'all know. I have flipped so many picture perfect pseudotriton logs in this little bottom land. And uh, before I rolled this one, I've only seen one. And then under there, it's another nice big intergrade red salamander. This guy looks super southern to me. Very, very dark face. Yeah, another good looking red salamander under this perfect mud salamander log. I cannot believe that we haven't been able to find a mud salamander out here, but I mean, hey, it's possible they're just not in this area, so. And here is yet another one of these guys. I flipped him under this log he's sitting on. Once again, a very tiny log, maybe a foot and a half long and very slender. As you can see, she's a lot more stout, almost as thick as my pinky in places. But that is another really interesting looking one with that kind of line of highlights down the side. All right, guys, I'm most of the way back to the car and I have not seen too much else. That's a good looking log though. Flip this. Oh, 
Something big just took off in the water there. Could have just been a big tadpole. Been seeing a lot of those. Hasn't been down too long. It's an actual stick. And again, best find of the day was under an actual stick, so. But yeah, most of the way back to the car, I had this really awesome thing happen where I went to flip a log and the log broke and my, my hand slipped and I ended up jamming that much dirt underneath my fingernail. And that's after I picked it out with my knife. If you've ever had anything go under your fingernail, you know that it does not feel good. These things really might be the most common salamander here. That's crazy. But then again, when you think about it, at the house we see way more of these than just about anything unless we hit on ambistoma migration night. On any given night, I'd say four toads are the most common salamander we see at home too. But most people do consider them to be kind of uncommon, so these spots where we can just find tons of them are pretty special in my opinion, so I am not upset. Literally the next log I flip has another red salamander under it. Pull this guy out. That might be the most colorful one yet, but he's also still got a really dark face. That's a good looking salamander. Normally this time of year, you really expect to see the red salamanders under the logs away from water like this. You can't make this up. This is the next log over. I already flipped it. There's another one. That is definitely the nicest one yet in terms of color, but it's also a little smaller than the others. So that makes four red salamanders on the day. That's definitely the most colorful, but he's also not fully grown. But wow, that's a good looking critter. All right, I'm gonna let him go back under his bark. Let's see how many red salamanders we can find between when I try to stop recording and when I get to the car. All right, we're coming up out of those bottom lands, so I doubt we're gonna see any more salamanders, but it was a pretty okay day. I think we did better than my last trip out to this spot, which is good enough for me. So I think I'm gonna call it a day here. And in the morning, I know tomorrow's not gonna be as warm, but it's gonna be sunny. I think the high is like around 50 degrees. Hopefully it'll get a little bit warmer than that, but we're probably just gonna do a quick afternoon outing to wrap up this video tomorrow and try to find a spring salamander. Well, everyone, this really unfortunate thing happened yesterday where I was on my way home and I was turning around and uh, apparently the axle on my car, which I just got replaced a couple weeks ago because it was creaking, uh, just snapped and I was unable to drive. So I spent the rest of the day on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck and someone to come pick me up. It was really not the best, but uh, because of that, we can't go anywhere today because I don't have a car because it's at the mechanic. So we're gonna try to make the best of it. It's actually really nice out here today. The tin is warm, uh, it's nice and sunny. And it's about 52, 53 degrees, so it's not super warm, but it's definitely warm enough that there could be some stuff out. So we're gonna poke around here at the house and just try to wrap this video up. I know it's not best case scenario. It's better than not getting this video out this weekend because after today, there's gonna be some pretty nasty weather coming in over the weekend, and I probably won't be able to get out again until Monday. So yeah, let's get to it. I know uh, I got a decent amount of footage the other day, so just trying to see if there's anybody hanging out under tin here today and then we might go walk around by the creek a little bit but this tin is it feels really good it's nice and warm i'm honestly kind of surprised i haven't seen anything yet i hit a couple of the things closer to the house already and they were nice and warm but no snakes yo look at that it's a snake under a rock in the winter <laughs> i just <laughs> i don't know that i've ever been this stoked to see a worm snake honestly i cannot think of another time i've been this stoked to see a worm snake is this kind of like retribution for the worm snake after i put them in d tier a couple days ago i'm sorry <laughs> i'm genuinely sorry i have gained a newfound respect for the resilience of worm snakes in this moment i have not seen a snake in georgia since january 1st and today is January 27th, so 
It has been one of the longest dry spells I've ever had in the state of Georgia. And I would definitely say this has been the longest dry spell I've had here since I was an adult and actually able to drive myself places. Look at that iridescence. And I will say as the man who, who underrated these snakes a couple of days ago, they are underrated. They're super cool. The iridescence is amazing. I would say the rating I gave these guys is more of a testament to how cool the rest of the snakes are in Georgia rather than a testament to how uncool these guys are because they're super awesome, really unique fossorials. That iridescence is just no joke. You could see when we flipped the rock there right before I grabbed him, he darted for a hole that went deeper underground. So this guy definitely has underground access under that rock and I would bet that he came up to thermoregulate because that rock is sitting in the sun over there. It was that one right there and uh, makes for a perfect place for him to sit there and warm up getting ready for spring, which is actually only right around the corner. I know it doesn't feel like it because it's still late January, but really normally normally we start getting spring-like weather around New Year's and this year that did happen, but then it got cold again. But there are a lot of days like today, nice 55, 60 degree days coming up in the next week after we get over the hump that is Saturday's very, very cold air. So Saturday, it's supposed to get down to a wind chill of two degrees, apparently here. I'm gonna make sure this guy gets back under his rock and uh, I'm gonna make sure I seal it well, get all the leaves back in place to keep the cold air out. But yeah, beautiful little Eastern worm snake. I'm actually gonna photograph this guy because like I said, I'm not sure I've ever been this excited about a worm snake. So <laughs> I'm gonna get some photos real quick and we'll let him go. All right, little guy, you may be D tier on YouTube, but you're S tier in my heart. What a little champion. Look at that tongue. All right, let's put him back. Maybe there will be some other stuff out. Last time I found a snake here at the house this winter, it was not the only thing we saw, if you'll recall. So we'll put him back and hit the rest of this stuff and see if there's anything else out. All right, big man. There you go. Like I said, we're gonna make sure to, make, to get all these leaves back up against the edge of the rock because they help insulate, keep that cold air out from under there. Even though I'm sure he's got a hole where he'll go deeper down. But that was actually the first rock I flipped since I got out here. So we're going to check the rest of these. Let's see if there's anybody else hanging out. There we go. Our second yard snake of the year. And it's another fossorial. This is a little ring neck, as most of you probably know. But for those who don't, it's a southern ring neck. I'm going to pull them out real quick and we'll get a better look. This time we're out on the super open power line cut where almost all these rocks are in the sun, getting nice warmth for most of the day on the southwest facing hillside. And that is a good recipe to bring these little guys up, even on cool days like today. These rocks warm up super fast. And a lot of the opportunistic species like ring necks will come up and try to warm up on days like today. And for one of the first times this winter, we've actually got to experience that because it has just been so painfully cold and we've had so many stretches of weather with just unrelenting freezes over and over again. The days like today where it's not actually that warm and most of the time I wouldn't even consider it to be that good of a day. And I think because of how cold it's been, these guys are a little bit more desperate to come up and warm up and get spring started, even though they're definitely jumping the gun because there is some much colder weather coming later this weekend. But hey, we flipped these rocks, not even, I guess it would have been around a month ago at this point, so it's been a little bit of time. Um, but we found a couple marbled salamanders right here. And there were no snakes. And on that day, it was much warmer. So I definitely think the time of year, look at the iridescence on this guy's head. I definitely think the time of year is starting to push snakes into activity just because they're tired of sitting underground, being cold, and they're trying to get up and get some warmth and get the season started because they know the days are getting longer. So with each passing day, as the days get longer, even if it's not super warm, the snakes know that we're getting closer to spring. So yeah, just like with the worm snake, I'm gonna get a quick picture of this guy and we'll put him back. All right, buddy, I'll let you go. Oh, he let himself go. The ring neck was right there, a couple rocks down, huge rock with a nice, very, very good looking marbled salamander. Our first salamander of the day, interestingly. I could probably just lower this down, but I'm gonna pull him out just to be safe. 
Look at that guy. That's beautiful. Really good looking critter. All right, dude, we'll put you back. Look over here. I know there's a space right there. Good stuff. All right, we're gonna work our way back up the hill towards home in the forest. Try to flip some rocks, there's some up there that we can hit. A little one here. These tiny rocks like that warm up a lot faster in the winter, so. It's definitely. Oh, there's a red bellied snake. Are you kidding me? That's the third species of snake for the day. This is so weird. Like, I, I wanna say it hasn't even been two or three weeks since we flipped all this stuff. And I know last time we flipped it, the weather was much better than it is today. If you would have told me I would have been seeing more snakes than salamanders today, I just would have told you you're lying. Because why? Why have we gone three weeks, three straight weeks of nothing, just so that we can find three different species of snake in about 30 minutes in my yard, under all the rocks that we've been flipping all winter? I genuinely could not tell you what is going on out here today, or why there's suddenly snakes everywhere. I mean, I, we've been out here, what, maybe 30, 45 minutes, and most of that time has been spent taking pictures of and video of the three snakes that we found. <laughs> like, I haven't even, I haven't even flipped all my 10 yet. So, uh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Definitely not something I was expecting to happen today, but hey, I will never complain about snakes, and I have never, I don't think I've ever been this desperate to just see some snakes in recent history because it's been so brutal. And this is just a testament to how much I love even the most common snakes because, you know, I, I made that tier list the other day and I was roasting all these little snakes, and now I'm out here giddy because i'm finding them so even if these guys aren't the most exciting finds i am still over the moon to have actually found some snakes today this is only the second day of the, the year of 2022 that i've been able to find snakes in georgia so i am over the moon about this i am going to show you guys this little red-bellied snake's belly real quick for you look at that that is awesome fantastic this isn't the most colorful phase of red belly they're kind of bland compared to the black ones in my opinion but still a really good looking little snake perfectly healthy no blisters and this guy's got good body weight, too. Walk this guy over here. Get these leaves down, make sure there's rocks in there good. And then we'll just uh, let him slip back under it. Very nice. I haven't flipped this one yet. At this point, I'm trying to think what really the, the thing that I honestly would have expected to see today if we were going to see something. If I knew we were going to see a snake today, I would say I would expect it to be a smooth earth because those things are out in the craziest weather. But we haven't seen one yet, so. These guys have been strangely absent. They're normally one of the most common herps out here. Nice little northern slimy. We saw a bunch of these guys yesterday, so. Hello. What's up, big guy? Didn't see you there. A good looking adult green and old. How's it going, buddy? Look at him. He's very wary, but at the same time, very tolerant of my presence. The same lizard has probably dealt with me flipping his rock many times before. I believe this rock had two marbles under it last time we flipped it, but there's only one here today. Looks like he's got a nice spot there, so we're just gonna lower this rock. Holy crap. Look at that little firecracker of a spotted salamander. Very nice. You can see he's in his little tunnel here under my board. That's really cool. All right, guys, I took a few photos of this really cool looking little juvenile spotted salamander. This guy has some incredible orange on his head. He's super cooperative, just sitting there for me. So we're gonna go put him back under his board. Gotta be said, it brings me a great amount of satisfaction to see a little man of such high caliber using my cover. The fact that I could provide such an animal with shelter brings me great happiness. Go on. And there he goes, very slowly. And it wasn't in focus, so. 
Now that is cool. That is a eastern fence lizard out basking. My neighbor's dog's being really annoying. Check that out. These guys are one of the species that will adapt their color in response to their environment. Not because they're trying to camouflage, but because a darker lizard warms up faster. So when their environment's cold, they will be dark. And when they're hot and their environment's hot, they will turn the normal gray coloration we see. But yeah, very cool. I'm gonna take a picture real quick. I was gonna flip this rock, but he's got a nice spot. So we're just gonna leave him right there. Really nice looking little eastern fence lizard soaking up the last bits of sun on this relatively warm January day. All right, this is gonna be our last flip for the day and for the video because light is fading and uh, the rest of my stuff that I have to flip is going to be in the shade by now, so. This piece has not produced much since summertime, which is unfortunate because it was really good last summer. We found a lot of snakes under this, often more than one at a time. All right, well, I definitely can't complain about how today went. It's a beautiful afternoon and we turned up some really cool stuff, especially considering how brutally slow it's been. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. I'm glad we finally got some snakes in locally. And uh, look forward to warmer weather and hopefully more snakes coming next week. Next week is going to be the first week of kind of spring-like weather we've gotten uh, since the turn of the new year or since New Year's Day, at least. It was very nice on New Year's Day. And then after that, it's just been a very gradual downhill slope to the last week or so, which has been awful. But yeah. It'll be warming up after this cold front this weekend, hopefully. So I will see you guys on the flip side. Yep, that's the first blooming daffodil I have seen this year. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Even though they're not native, they are one of the biggest signs that spring is on its way. And they never fail to put a smile on my face, especially after a day of finally finding snakes after what has been a very brutal winter. So hopefully this is the beginning of the end of that and we will have a long and productive spring heading our way. I'm gonna leave you guys with a look at this flower and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.